Hi guys. Hi. This is Ezekiel. And Sarah. And we're here today with another episode of Marriage, Marriage Matters. Matters. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to go in. We're just going to move in. I got something for us today to discuss. It's Ezekiel's turn to bring a scripture yeah. for us today. Yeah, yes, it is indeed. All wonderful couples out there and everybody, you know, making it work. <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. So, yes. Um, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer, yeah, mm-hmm. and we'll just get kicked off. Amen. Glorious King, I thank you. Thanks for today. Thanks for this broadcast. Thanks for the opportunity to share this, your word with this, your people. I pray, Father, that as we read today and as we share, that your Holy Spirit will enlighten, empower and enrich our lives for your glory. Thanks very much for all you've done and all you continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Glorious day today. Yes, it is. It's You're always right. a good day. One of my favourite things in saying when I'm praying is, um, "This is the day that the Lord has made, mm. and I shall rejoice and be glad in it." And most days are good for me, <laughs> so yeah. I just thank God for that. Because, like we said in um, the one of the other episodes, and we were talking about faith and speaking things, and mm. that's one of the things that I, you know. One thing I make sure I do is I declare and decree that my day will be good and I'll praise rejoice. God. So yeah, praise God. So it's a good day, huh? maybe you guys should take a leaf out of Sarah's book. If you don't do that already, um, maybe start to take your day, as they say, take the bull by its horns. And when you start the day, confess that today will be a good day, a blessed day, and that God's will will manifest and yeah. permeate throughout your day. Throughout your day, throughout your life, through your marriage. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Today we are reading uh, mm-hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 32 Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be honing in uh, honing in on verse 32 yes uh yeah verse 30 so this is not really um, this is a little different from usual so normally we may read um, a a bunch of verses uh, and what we're going to do today is really hone in on this particular verse um, we, we kind of find ourselves slap bang in the middle of Moses singing a song. He's got this song, um, kind of recounting the wonders of God, how great God is. And um, there's this little verse that you may be familiar with. Um, it, it's purported a lot. And it's also found in some, a few different places in the scriptures as well. We can turn there maybe. Um, but the key here is this particular verse is found in the middle of uh, Moses talking about uh, the, the strength and the glory of God essentially so um 30 to 30 shall we do something a little different should we read it together today sure hopefully we won't sound (laughs) too funny and let's give it a shot because it's just the one verse right now yeah it's just the one um 32 and 30 that's right all right on your count okay what no joke (laughs) 32 and 30. All right, mm-hmm. you know, well, let's let's actually add 31 in, all right? Are you sure? Yeah, really? Yeah, so you read 30 then. Wait, you let's do it, let's do it. Okay. All right, uh, three, two, one, and go. How, How should you... one... See, I'm ready, and I knew it wasn't, it wasn't gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. But we're reading two different translations. Yours says, how should. Mine, mine already says, how, how could. Let's try. Let's try. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Let's harmonize. Let's harmonize. All right. Three, two, one. How, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? Had surrendered them. Okay. So then 31 says, for their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies um, judges or themselves judges. All right, so the people have been free. The context here is that the people have been free, they've been liberated, and kind of like way down the line here, Moses is talking about um, the greatness and the, the wonder, the grandeur of God, and how good God is. Mm-hmm. And then we find this little verse in the middle. And the verse is quite interesting because for me, um, it has a plethora mm. of application. Yeah. It has a plethora of application. And I think that it, it would do us well to really consider. Um, this type of stance mm-hmm. when we're thinking about relationships, when we're thinking about um, how our relationship 
affairs in the great wide world. And I, I, I say to say all the time, we talk about this, I don't think it's ideal for one couple to compare themselves to another couple. I know in the day and age that we live in, social media and all of these things, um, just ma mass media, you're constantly barraged with other people's relationships, the inside of other people's homes, how they live and what's going on, right? Yeah. Um, but it's key for us um, as people, as couples, founding um, our own house mm -hmm. and trying to build our own thing yeah. to really establish it for ourselves yeah. um, without comparison to others. Mm -hmm. What I like to do is maybe compare our yesterday to today yeah. or our today into tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helps. So if we look at our relationship and we say 10 years ago, this is where we were yeah. in terms of our communication, yeah. in terms of our finance, mm -hmm. in terms of our child rearing skills. Yeah. And, and we look at that today, you'd hope, you'd hope that there was There's some improvement. That's right, <laughs> yeah. that's right. So, and if you've planned, prepared and prayed your way forward, yeah. absolutely, you can guarantee that there will be. Definitely. So, 30 talks about the power and the ability for one person versus the power and the ability with two people. That's right. And I think this is really key. As an individual, yeah. by myself, there's only so much I can do. Mm -hmm. But what God says is, with his power mm -hmm. and his ability, when two are joined together, mm. you'd, you'd think just mathematically yeah. that one taking a thousand, two, maybe you could take 2,000, maybe a little less depending on your yeah. abilities, yeah. maybe a little more depending on your abilities. But God presents here this kind of, this what, what can we call it this gospel mm. mathematics this mm. kingdom math that's it kingdom and what it math. Uh, that's yeah. right and, and what it says is that it's one to one thousand and two mm. to ten thousand that's a completely different ratio isn't it absolutely yeah, like absolutely you try to do simple maths that don't add up does it <laughs> <laughs> not if you're using the earthly natural yeah, math not if you're using that but, so definitely this is definitely some kingdom mathematics right here Hmm. I like that. I mean, I just, I do truly believe this is a great scripture for a marriage anyway, as a basic foundation and just as an understanding of what you can achieve if the two of you come together and operate as one, mm -hmm. you know, um, because like the scripture here is saying, uh, one person can only do so much, but two people can do practically 10 times more than what one person can do. And I think it's obviously like, um, you know, I was going to say, kind of say like a massive exaggeration mm. on how much two people could achieve. It's an exponential. Yeah. It's an exponential. So normally one and one is two. Yeah. Here we see in the kingdom, there's mm -hmm. an exponential mm -hmm. um, jump. Yeah. It's an exponential jump. Yeah. So it yeah. does seem like that, but yeah, yeah we can. Yeah. Because the force of obviously two people coming together makes, can, can, they can do so much. They yeah. can do so much. A bit like God and and, 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 and the Son, you know. He said, you know, Jesus says he can do nothing. He does nothing that, um, everything he does, he sees his Father do. Mm. You know, and he tells us that um, he's done this, but greater things That's shall right. we That's do. That's right. That's right. You know, and it's just sort of the moment to, to come together, mm. you're going to, you know, if obviously by God's grace, you'll achieve more. Yeah, that's a powerful point. You raise a really, that, that's a powerful point. You raise a, raise a really, really powerful point. Yeah. So um, the word encourages us, the master encourages us that greater works than he's done shall we do. Yeah. And, and I think it's important for us to really begin to look at the terrain of our lives, really examine things yeah. and then wonder, just really ask ourselves, is it possible for us to really see, conceptualize in our mind the greater things that the master's encouraged for us to do. Mm -hmm. There's so much more. You're looking at your relationship versus someone else and that in itself is um, a feat that's kind of restricting you. If you look at someone else's relationship, you say, oh, I wish our relationship was like theirs. You don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. And as we spoke about in the previous broadcast, as Sarah mentioned, your words are power. Mm -hmm. Words are really, really powerful. So while you don't know what's going on over there, but you're saying, oh, I wish my relationship was quite like theirs. Mm -hmm. You don't really know what you're drawing in yeah. to your relationship. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I looked at Young's and it, instead of talking about 10,000, it talks like about a myriad, like a great number of people. But um, we see this concept, we'll call it that, a concept yeah. in a few different places. So if we take a quick look to Leviticus, mm -hmm. 
chapter 26. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll take it from verse six. Six seems like a. Mm. Ah, there you go. Had it highlighted. <laughs> so Leviticus 26 and verse six. And six says, um, And I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none. Um, will make you afraid and I will rid evil beasts out of the land neither shall the sword go through your land it says and you shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword and five of you shall chase a hundred mm -hmm. and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight mm. and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword mm. it says for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you I, I think I think it's a bit obvious who's speaking there, mm. um, and or who the message is coming from, I should say. And when we look at those verses there, what we understand is that at that time they were in war, there was battles going on, and they were being given this word of encouragement, this word of power. Yeah. And again, we see a, a likening to what we read a moment ago in Deuteronomy that presents this kingdom mathematics mm -hmm. to us. And God was saying this; He was saying, "Look." There are enemies. You've got enemies. Okay. For them at that point in time, it was the Canaanite or the Philistine or whoever was resident in the land that they were asked to go into mm -hmm. and capture and take back. But for us in marriage, our enemies are fear, greed, anger, negative mindset. Poverty. Poverty. The stigma of the world that they present on our relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for us to understand that in much the same way, the New Testament tells us that there's a war going on. There's yes. a war between yes. um, the, the, the natural and the spiritual. Between, within your members even, the, the spirit yeah. is warring against the flesh, it tells yeah. us. So I want you to understand that in much that same way, there's a war against your marriage. There's a war against the union right. that God is establishing in you, for you, that God is leading you towards. So we need to be very, very mindful mm -hmm. but of the battle, but very, very mindful of the ability. We spoke last time about... Um, the 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 weapons of our warfare mm. not being carnal so it's really important for us to understand that prayer is important yeah prayer is an important part of us being able to take out ten thousand people That's right. so you're looking at your relationship and you're saying hold on there's this kind of barrage of negative thoughts mm. negative energy yeah. some people might call it coming towards them mm -hmm. how do we deal with that mm -hmm. being united in That's prayer it. That's and I was going to say, obviously, you deal with that by the two. You can, you know, as a wife, you can pray on your own. You know, you can go to your prayer closet. Or you can just anywhere, wherever you pray. And you can get down and you can devote those things to the Lord. Your husband, your children, your finances, your home, you know, your job and all those kind of things, your business. And also as a husband, you can do the same that's thing. Right. But it's different when the two of you come together in United, agreement. That's right. Okay, it's completely different. Even, you know, even if you haven't tried it, you know, or you, you've done it, and but you haven't done it for quite some time, get together and pray and bring your supplications to the Lord. Bring your prayer requests to the Lord together as a team as one unit and see what God will do mm. you know because uh, uh, you know obviously the husband's the head of the home and you know the wife is under the husband but that doesn't mean that we can't pray as individuals you know but when we come together as one mm. to pray to you know give our family to, to, to dedicate our family to the Lord to dedicate our finances to the Lord that union that started the marriage that union, that agreement that you made the day you got married also needs to be implemented in your prayer life. Absolutely, I agree. You know, it needs to be implemented in your prayer life because, you know, at, at the same time as well, it's like God, God, he's, he's, he's a, he is a person of his, of his word, you know, and the commitment, the commitment, the contract that we signed, you know, when we got married was we do this together. That's right. That's right. You know, we do this together. I truly believe that God, on, God honors when um, husbands and wives pray together That's right. because those prayers are prayers of agreement. Mm. You understand? That's right. It's prayers of agreement. You know, if a wife went on and to went on to pray, oh Lord, give us a new house. I'm just, you know, it's just an example, please. You know, people. You know, oh Lord, give us a new house, <laughs> yeah. or whatever. And the husband doesn't want to move. Mm. 
you know, or it's gonna, or it's gonna cost him, or it's gonna, you know, make him work more hours at work. Yeah. You know, because the, you know, the, the mortgage is gonna be a lot more for a bigger house. He might not want that. He might not want that, you know. But if you both know what you both want in that mm. marriage, and you're both in agreement of moving, and you're right. both in agreement of a bigger house, a bigger home, a bigger car, whatever right. it may be, those prayers will be honoured. Yeah. You understand? Because if the husband is not in agreement, I can't, I mean, I haven't, to be, to be honest, as I'm saying this, it's just like a fresh sort of revelation mm. in a sense for me. Because, you know, we have to be in agreement when it comes to the things of God and Absolutely. when it comes to the things of our family. Absolutely. And the Lord honours that. Mm. And he honours that union, mm. you know. So it's sort of like praying behind one's back mm. or doing something behind one's back. That's right, behind, that's right, behind that's one. right. And God doesn't, God's not for that. That's right. We read, we read um, you know, in the previous episode, um, the fig tree, deception, God's not for deception. Mm. So, you know, when I think about, you know, the types of prayers that we pray, when we're praying for our families, mm. when we're praying for our homes, yes, indeed, it's important for man and, the, you know, man and woman, husband and wife to be united for that prayer. And, in, you know, even though, even though, um, you know, if a, if a husband prays a prayer separately and a wife prays a prayer separately, God was God, you know, would still honor that prayer. <laughs> but I truly believe that you know the prayer, the the request will probably come a lot quicker. The answer will probably come a lot quicker. But God sees the heart as well. That's right. God, God sees the heart. You know, if a husband should pray but he's not praying, but mm. that thing is on his heart, mm. and the wife's the one praying about it, God sees the husband's heart and he knows that that's on the husband's heart, and the husband does want to move, mm. but the husband's not praying about it. You know, but the wife's praying about, or vice versa. Yeah. And I'll keep yeah. saying the wife, but you know, or vice versa. God sees the heart. Yeah, it's important. It's important, really, to commit. It's important, as Sarah's saying, to commit your considerations, your cares unto God. It's very important to commit your cares and your considerations unto God. It's very, very powerful. And as Sarah's talking now, it reminds me of what we see in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 11 um, and we're, we're presented with the Tower of Babel everyone speaks the same language they have this idea they want to build this massive tower and there's a unique lesson that I see in that chapter it's really really powerful and it's, it's kind of pricked to me for, and, it, and it's pricked me for years as the Lord has really ushered me on to get a strong understanding of what it means mm. so it's Genesis 11 yeah. And we see the conclusion, the Lord's conclusion um, in five and six. So he says, it says, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So Sarah was talking a moment ago about the husband having an imagination in his mind, thinking about something, it's in his heart, and his wife is praying about it. And it's very, very key when two people come together in unity, when they're united in that fashion, yeah. God says here that there's nothing that they imagine that they cannot do. Yeah. And that's very, very key for a relationship. 100%. Very, very key for a relationship. And, and this is a good point to kind of bring in. This is why a family vision, mm. yeah, a vision for life, as a family is paramount yeah. you need to know the direction you're going in yeah. your finances mm -hmm. where are we going with our finances mm -hmm. our children mm -hmm. what type of children are we raising That's what are right. our commitments That's for right. the things that are important to us the most important in our life yeah. our careers our businesses yeah. those kind of things it's very very key yeah. for us to consider those things and have a strong understanding that unites us mm. so I looked at the Young's Literal for verse seven, and it says, sorry, for verse six. I looked at Young's Literal, for, I looked at Young's Literal for verse six, and this is what it says. Um, and the Lord, and Jehovah saith, lo, the people are one, and one pronunciation to them all. And this it hath dreamed, and this it hath dreamed of doing, and now nothing is restrained from them of that which they have purposed to do. So in much the same way, but here we're talking about the pronounce the same thing again talking about speaking mm. the power of words That's the right. power of saying things together That's being right. united so when we read the first verse and it's one will take a thousand two will take ten thousand there's a unique 
unity, mm. a unique unison. I don't know if you've ever seen synchronized swimming, mm. but those swimmers Beautiful. are Beautiful. in sync. Absolutely. And it, it, it's, it's almost melodic, the way that they move mm. just together in such sync, they practice and they mm. train and they practice and they train mm. to get that, that power That's of beautiful. unity. Yeah, indeed. Um, I just want to touch on complete Jewish. I know I, I like bouncing around in, in the in the translations, but it says, look, the people are united. They all have a single language. What would it be like if husband and wife have a single, wow. unique language? Wow. It says... The children will understand. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it says, and see what they're starting to do. At this rate, nothing they set out to accomplish will be impossible for Amen. them. Amen. That's God speaking. That's God's powerful. talking to us about the power yeah. if we unite. The power that we have, Sarah, me and you. Mm. If we unite in our vision, yeah. in our purposes, yeah. in our language. Yeah. Imagine you call somebody, you call the husband, you ask him a question, he gives you one response. Mm. Maybe uh, within the same moment, you know they're two different countries, you speak to the wife, she gives you the exact same response. That mm. kind of unity and strength encourages the fostering and the fruitfulness of things. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember what scripture it is, but mm. I, um, where the Bible says that if a wife goes out to the marketplace or goes to the yes, gates yes, yes, yes. And, she, the and she says, she makes a decision, mm. or, you know, I'm paraphrasing, she makes a decision on, the, on behalf of her household that the husband is in agreement if he didn't, if it's her, another, yeah. If it has it go? Yeah, I'll, I'll put it out for you now. Yeah, if yeah, well, yeah, we're better off bringing it out because my paraphrase might go. <laughs> so yes, I mean, guys, this is so important. What we're discussing here today about two people coming together to fight battles that one person can only fight somewhat by themselves, you know. Um, I mean, it's the same thing, you know, there's so many situations and so many examples that this relates to. You know, I mean, what we're discussing here is, is, is covers a lot of ground, you know, in relationships, in marriages, because, you know, when one person tries to accomplish something, they can only go so far. Mm. But when two people come together to, whether it's a start a business or, you know, unite in marriage or... Even students, you know, students studying on your own yeah, yeah, is yeah. probably a little bit more challenging than when you're studying with someone else. You can fire questions at each other and you can see what someone else has written and, you know, yeah. you realise, oh, actually, I could have said this in a better way. You know what, let me... There's, there's power in unity. There's power when two people, when two people come together, mm. you know, in, in, in many different situations. Yeah. You know. So that verse you were talking about is in Numbers. Numbers mm. chapter 30. We can turn there. Okay. We go from about verse 12. Numbers 30. Yeah. Verse 12. Yes, I think this is one instance of where we see something very similar to what you're talking about. Go from 12. Do you want to read up? Yeah. You can do a verse each or you I mean, can go for it. I'm, I'm, my eyes are just running through. I see where it says husband, wife, husband, wife throughout this whole thing. So, you know, um, it's uh, my Bible says it's titled The Law the law concerning vows yes indeed. Indeed. <laughs> the law concerning vows yeah. so you know maybe this is something that we will read later here on marriage matters but for now we're just going to quickly go into the verse that i was trying to paraphrase you can go to okay so let's go where did i say just now verse 12 I think. all right so it, there, there's a few references mm -hmm. all right so uh, let's go from 10 to 12 i'll read the first verse if that's okay with you yeah and if she vowed in her husband's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath. And her husband heard it and made no response to her and didn't and did not overrule her, then all her vows shall stand, and every agreement by which she bound herself shall stand. Okay, and twelve says, But if her husband have utterly made them void on the day he heard, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand her husband hath made them void and the lord shall forgive her okay. amen yeah yeah do you have could you can you read 12 in a in, in a slightly simpler translation i feel like uh okay i will go to the contemporary 
English yes, version. Now, in fact, we'll go Bible in basic English. Okay, go on then. How's that for nice and simple? Mm -hmm. What was it, 13? 12. 12. But if her husband, on hearing of it, mm -hmm. made them without force or effect, mm -hmm. then whatever she has said about her oaths or her undertaking has no force. Mm -hmm. Her husband has made them without effect, mm -hmm. and she will have the Lord's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Unity. <laughs> That's it, mm. that's it. And it just clearly shows that the husband is head overall. Mm. You know, he's head. So, the, you know, just the scripture here was, was talking about if a woman goes out and she makes a decision on, the, on behalf of her and her husband, yes. and if her husband hears about it and he doesn't come back and say, no, 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 I wasn't, uh, no, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 I didn't tell her to go and say that, I wasn't part of it, I didn't give her the authority to go out and say that, then if he doesn't say that then whatever she says stands because mm. it's you know that's that's the rule of thumb it's the husband then the wife isn't mm. it if he's not there to make the decision then the wife can make the decision however if she says something that he's not in agreement with and he goes back and say listen i'm not in agreement with that it doesn't stand mm. it's like it's ruled out yeah. it's void void means no more right mm. so this is the, the reason why that scripture came to me was because it talk is talking about unity mm. here. So even if she makes a wrong decision and he doesn't say anything, he's backing her really. That's right. He's backing her. Mm. He's uniting with her to say, yeah, what she said, I'm with it. I don't need to say anything because I agree. So that is that's another form of unity. Mm. Even if you if you don't say anything, you're practically saying that mm. I, agree. I agree. Yeah, I think that, I think that's one of the challenges as well. Some people don't um, understand how when you don't object to something when you don't stand up for something when you don't take a stand for Oof. something you don't agree with in essence indirectly you're agreeing with it right. you're, you're refusing to take an appropriate stand and say hold on um, I want no part in this I don't actually think that's right. that's right so if you do that what you're actually doing is saying yeah well you know it's okay yeah well, I agree yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of the marriages out there, you know, a lot of the people watching this could can relate. You know, there's probably been times where, you know, let's just say your your teenage son or daughter have wanted to go to a, a friend's party locally, and they've asked their mum, and their mum said, yeah, but you didn't want them to go, but because you didn't say anything, that child still went mm -hmm. because you didn't disagree with it. So That's it was, true. and then later on, if anything happens, and you turn around and say, oh, but I didn't want you to, to go, go. To, yeah, the child's like, but you didn't say anything. You, you, you were in agreement with mum because if you wasn't dad, you would have told me then. Mm, or vice versa. Or vice versa, you know. Yeah. So very, very, very powerful, you know, um, keys to uni uniting here with our words, with our Absolutely. agreements, you know, with our actions as well. Yeah. You know, with our actions as well because actions sometimes can speak louder than words as they say, you know. So even if we, even if we, you know, you can rectify things is what I'm trying to say. So if someone's gone out and said something and you go in and you say no, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not partaking in that. I don't want my children there. No, my household's not going to be part of this, whatever. You're now jumping in and you're acting as somebody who's not in agreement and people understand that. Yeah. You know? Indeed. Indeed. So yeah. That's some powerful truth. Yes, I, I, I think we're just to kind of sum up let's go back and read the initial verse once more yeah. um just so everyone knows where we Deuteronomy started from 32 verse 13, 13 that's right three zero um and it just says how should one chase a thousand mm -hmm. and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them Excuse and me. the lord had shut them up mm. he's then he goes on to say for their rock is not our rock and that yeah. so one of the things here is we're talking about taking over yeah, we're talking about winning in a battle. Yeah. And it's one thing for myself and Sister Sarah to be united in, in a mm. thing. It's another thing for the two of us to be united and then for God to be in that union. Mm. Now, when two people unite <laughs> and God is in union with them, oh, wow. or when two people choose to unite with God, mm. what you find is you're able to exercise some of this kingdom math that we've That's got here. Right. You're able to take back what the enemy has kind of tried to block for you or store mm -hmm. or, or be caused to be or caused to be stagnant mm. so i'm talking to those of you who have relationships who are kind of struggling who are finding themselves 
unable to kind of get to the next level in their relationship. I speak to some husbands, we speak to some wives, some couples from time to time. And we understand that challenge is real. The battle is real. But we're here today just to encourage you that if you're truly united, if you truly commit to a union between husband and wife, and if you truly commit to a union between husband and wife and God, you'll see the results that God here declares are possible for those in union. Yeah. Powerful very, very, verse very, very of scripture. Verse. One verse, guys. That was one verse. <laughs> plus one, one plus one. But yes, okay, indeed. Okay, yeah, one verse and a little bit of, you know, of, yeah, of the, other scriptures yeah. to, you know, um, back what, what, what it is that we're saying. And again, this is why we will constantly say, read, read together. Your, yeah, that's right. Read your scriptures together. Read your scriptures together. It can be a single, like Sarah said, it can be a single verse. Just one verse. You share a verse in the morning, sit down, mm. uh, over breakfast, before breakfast, once you get out of bed, yeah. have a quick read of it, just a little bit of a conversation and That's some it. prayer, and God can really do wonders for you. That's it. And as well, what you're doing when you're when you're reading together, even if it is just one verse, is you're building your communication. You know, if you find that in your marriage you haven't really been conversing with your spouse as much. Try using the scriptures to make that as a point of contact, to make conversation. Because, you know, sometimes as we go on in our relationships, and a lot of the times people who have been together for a long time, we take advantage of the fact that we're with this person. Mm. We don't really need to talk. You can spend hours talking to somebody on the phone. Mm. You know, you can spend hours laughing and cackling with a colleague. And then you get home and then you put dinner on the table and everyone goes to their mobile phones. And, That's right. You know, and the conversation aspects of, of your life is not really being raised mm. up anymore but you think to yourself that person's here at night they're here in the morning right. so they're not going anywhere however conversation is so key and it's such a pivotal part of our relationship that we must ensure that we do all that we can to keep building that and if you found that you know you you, you don't know how to start conversation ask a question a lot of times, you know, I find, I tend to find that I, I, I ask my husband a lot of questions and he appreciates when I ask him questions, even no matter, sometimes no matter how silly it may sound. Mm. But if you don't know, you don't know. It's true. You know? It's true. It's true. I think, I think um, one of the keys, we, we've touched on it previously in previous broadcasts, but it's about humility. And I think we'll, we'll really take time to, yeah. at some point, to discuss Touch some of that. that. Yeah. Um, but if you can humble yourself mm -hmm. in your relationship, um, under, excuse me, if you can humble yourself in your relationship under um, God's lordship, That's you great. find real grace and real power. It helps. Definitely. It helps immensely. So indeed, what Sarah said is, is key. Take some time out to really share together, read yeah. together, and you'll see God do wonders in your marriage. This has been Ezekiel. And Sarah. With today's episode, episode of, of Marriage, marriage Matters. Matters. But we'll see you on the next broadcast. And um, you want to say a quick word of prayer as we close yes, out? Yes, yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, Lord, that you have spoken to us through Deuteronomy 32, 30, Father God, which states, Lord, that how could one chase a thousand and two chase 10,000? Father God, the two, couple, the two people united, Lord, we're praying, Father God, for unity in marriage yes, right now, Father God. We're praying, Lord, as we as we sit here in this broadcast, Father God, and, and people are watching, Heavenly Father, husbands are watching, wives are watching, Lord. We pray, Father God, for their unity to yes, become Father. stronger than ever. Amen. Father God, we're praying right now for their Bible reading, Father God, to increase and Amen. grow, for their knowledge and wisdom, Father God, to, to increase in you, Heavenly Father. Right now, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you bless their lives, Heavenly Father. Bless their lives, bless their families, their finances, their children, Father God. Open doors for them, Heavenly Father, to be able, Father God, to allow your light to come into their lives and to come into their marriages and to come into their homes for the better, to advance your kingdom them lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen and amen. amen thanks for watching guys we really appreciate you love you guys loads um, yes we really appreciate you guys love you loads and um we do this for you the whole purpose of what we're doing here is for you it, it benefits us we do this and um, this is what we do but we're sharing it with you guys so that you can have a little peek and what happens over on our side and you can take like some little tidbits of what we do and hopefully it will help enrich and empower your relationship with god and with 
each other. Yes, yeah, so please guys, like, share and subscribe to our channel. Share this message with your loved ones, with your friends and your families. Even anybody that you know that is going through a hard time in marriage mm. right now that's mm. confiding in you about marriage or maybe seeking worldly counsel as well, you know, share this, share our channel with them and let them know that we're here and, you know, they can leave comments. Please feel free to leave comments and if you yourself gained any fresh revelation from what it is that we've yeah, said, drop a line. please share that with us as well. Well, okay, so we love you loads and we'll see you again. <laughs> Take care. All right, bye. Bye bye.